Let me know when it's 7 o'clock. Let me know when we're live. <clears throat> We are live and the link has been posted. All right, so I can start. You can start. I'd like to call the 7 p.m. work session meeting to order. Uh, roll call of the Township Committee, please. Mr. Boonstra? Here. Ms. Fisher? Here. Ms. Rubenstein? Here. Mr. Madigan? I uh, here. Mayor Shanley? Here. Please take notice that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon four through six at SEC and in consideration of executive order number 103 issued by Governor Murphy on March 9th, 2020, declaring a state of emergency in the state of New Jersey, the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff does hereby notify the public that to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, the meeting of the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff scheduled for 7 p.m. Thursday, November 5th, 2020 at Wyckoff Town Hall, 340 Franklin Avenue, Wyckoff, New Jersey, 07481, will be conducted via the Township of Wyckoff's YouTube channel. And members of the public may call 201-891-7000, extension 222, should they wish to provide public comment during the 7 p.m. public comment period. Members of the public may also email their public comments to wyckoffclerk at wyckoff-nj.com before 3 p.m. on the date of the meeting. These comments will be read at the meeting during the public comment period. These measures are implemented to allow members of the public to observe the meeting via live streaming and to provide the ability um, excuse me, to provide the public the ability to comment before the meeting through written comments and during the period for public comments during the meeting. Due to the COVID-19 public health emergency, members of the public will not have access to Town Hall. This notice and agenda have been posted on the front door of Town Hall facing Franklin Avenue and on the Township's homepage, wyckoff-nj.com, at the quick link for minutes and agendas on Friday, October 30, 2020. Please select Township Committee and locate the date of the meeting to view documents such as resolutions and ordinances which would otherwise be made available. General instructions regarding access to the meeting will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-nj.com as a news item on Friday, October 30th, 2020 at 5, 4 30 p.m. To view the live stream Township Committee meeting, please access the YouTube link which will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-nj.com <coughs> as a news item immediately prior to the commencement of the meeting at approximately 6.55 p.m. on November 5, 2020. To be notified of all future live stream Township meetings, please create a YouTube account and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Township of Wyckoff. In the event the YouTube platform modifies its connectivity protocols and does not announce these critical changes again in the future, instructions on how to view each meeting via Zoom technology will be posted at the news section of the Township's homepage, wyckoff-nj.com, before 7.10 p.m. This second method of conducting remote meetings is provided to ensure the continuity of government when platforms which the township does not control establish unannounced changes and will only be utilized if it is not possible to conduct the meeting via live stream on YouTube. As a precaution, for this plan B, the following instructions are provided. Please locate the link posted on the news item announcing the township committee meeting on the homepage of our website and use this link for the November 5, 2020 work session and business meeting set to begin at 7 p.m. This regular work session meeting of the Wyckoff Township Committee is now in session. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting appears on our annual schedule of meetings. A copy of said annual schedule has been posted on the bulletin board in Memorial Town Hall. A copy has been filed with the municipal clerk, as well as the Record, the Ridgewood News, and the North Jersey Herald and News, all newspapers having a general circulation throughout the Township of Wyckoff. At least 48 hours prior to this meeting, the agenda thereof was similarly posted, filed, and emailed to said newspapers. The agenda with the resolutions and ordinances to be considered was posted on the township website at Minutes and Agendas on the Friday prior to the tonight's meeting. Thank you. Have we confirmed Finance Committee has reviewed and signed vouchers and that the mayor and municipal clerk have signed all necessary documents? We have, Mr. Mayor. All right, very good. Then I'm going to ask for a motion uh, for a 10 minute public comment, uh, 10 minute public comment period, two minutes per speaker for public comment on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the Township of Wyckoff. So moved. Second. Thank you. Mr. Boonstra? Uh, yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Our public comment section is now open. Uh, call 201-891-7000, extension 222 if you have public comment. Mm 
Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask the clerk, uh, did we receive any written comments? We did not, okay. Mr. Shannon. Thank you. Last call for public comment, call 201-891-7000, extension 222. Hearing nothing, I move that the public comment, the work session be closed. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Bob, can we get a review of the 8 p.m. business meeting agenda, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, uh, resolution number 301 was uh, posted uh, yesterday on the website. This is the resolution which authorizes the, the TEFLA hearing. Uh, the agenda has been modified since Friday. Uh, it includes under motions an item C, which is uh, a promotion of a sergeant to lieutenant. Uh, the administration of oath of office will take place at the next meeting, which will be Monday, November 16th. And a, a second motion, number D, approves the donor plaque for the scoreboard, which was donated for Memorial Field. This was also uh, posted on our website yesterday. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you asked me to place this on the agenda, so I, I, I edited this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I also wish to uh, point out to you that Resolution 293 is the resolution required uh, to indicate that the governing body has reviewed the township's response to the best practice checklist. This is the 11th year that the state has uh, required the best practice checklist uh, on which they base whether they're going to provide municipalities with all of their state aid. For the past 10 years, the township uh, has uh, scored so well that we've received all our state aid. This year, we've also earned a 100% score, which means we will also receive our state aid this year. Last thing I'd like to propose is a resolution, and there's been quite a bit of information on, on a dais regarding an emergency purchase to, uh, to address a significant issue with our sanitary sewer pump stations. The details are, are, are provided. I've been working with our town engineer and our New Jersey DEP licensed sewer operator and I met with the um, Township Committee Sewer Subcommittee, and this is a joint recommendation to add that resolution to the agenda so we can move expeditiously to address this emergent situation. Uh, I do want to point out that we have three public hearings scheduled for uh, this evening. Uh, and we do have a motion which authorizes bidding this is the annual recreation equipment bid. It includes 238 unit prices. So there's a potential of 238 individual awards. The township is the lead agency, which means we do all the work, but we take advantage of volume discount pricing. The other members are Franklin Links and Oakland. Uh, they benefit by the price, but don't do any of the work. Thank, thank you, Bob. Um, can we uh, have a review of the policy action items, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I could. I, I'd like to uh, uh, extend my congrats. First, I would extend my congratulations are extended to all the candidates who desire to serve our community as elected officials and participate in the governing process. And I want to thank the White Glove voters who participated in the democratic process through exercising their right to vote. Um, I just want to point out a couple of quick things for your information. We've received notice that the new succession of community development block grant application opportunities are available. I've asked the staff to look at every nook and cranny. We have in the past utilized this grant 
effectively to remove architectural barriers and construct barrier-free entries to municipal public buildings and to construct curb cuts in the township. I would like to point out to you that the township was notified that it will receive a GIF dividend amounting to $18,288. These are typically used to offset next year's insurance costs. This is very positive. It indicates that safety is a positive fiscal indicator. Next item is we have been working hard to implement the new law and the GIF program to uh, protect the taxpayers and children for protecting children. Uh, we have issued information regarding training where we've asked for the governing body's assistance. Um, it does include requirements of uh, volunteers, both volunteer coaches as well as volunteer board and commission members to complete the, the changes, or excuse me, to complete the training. So we ask your assistance as liaisons to those departments uh, to help us um, obtain all the training. We had a request last week from a, um, a Girl Scout leader to use the White Buff Community Park Bridge over the brook uh, for a bridging ceremony. This is a, typically when uh, the uh, children bridge into the next level of scouting. Uh, we had uh, requested to know the, the date. We haven't heard back, uh, but when we do, the recommendation will be to allow it with the typical certificate of insurance that we need to require. <coughs> um, I just wanted to point out as it relates to the insurance component of the annual budget for next year, the joint insurance fund held the uh, cost to a zero increase. So that's very, very positive. I spoke to GIF today, and uh, at the end of uh, next week, they're going to have the information available online for the annual elected officials training session, where the governing body typically earns a $250 per governing body member discount for the township's next year insurance cost. So I will provide that to you. I thought we might have it by tonight, but it's going to be issued next week. As way of an update, uh, the owner of the property at 232 and 234 Madison Avenue, which I requested at the last meeting a copy of the appraisal, has not pro pro provided that to us, so I cannot follow up any additional update with that. Uh, I would also like to uh, uh, thank uh, Nancy Brown, our new clerk, and her staff of Mario and, and, and Anna. Uh, who did a good job with the election administration process, as well as help from the DPW and the police department. Um, also, too, I'd like to bring to your attention, we're moving forward with the Stormwater Management Act requirements that are due next March. It also requires governing body members to take some training. I completed my training over the weekend. It really wasn't that long in the six videos. None of them are more than 12 minutes. Um, I wanted to uh, have a discussion with the governing body. We've received a request from Rabbi Kaplan to conduct a menorah lighting ceremony this year. <coughs> and we also know that uh, we will be expecting a letter from the Chamber of Commerce with their saying that comes to light off of the Christmas tree program. Obviously, this year is challenge with the social distancing requirements. I tried to provide some options for the governing body to consider. So I thought this might be... Tom? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Tom. Are you going you gonna to give us some options? I did. He did. So in the packet. In the email. In the memo I sent today. I yeah. Unfortunately, I had no time to look at emails today, so. But I did speak with Howie Seelis, the president of the Chamber of Commerce today, but in light that I didn't see the memo, I, I don't feel I should disclose what he said. So, okay, thank you. I apologize I didn't get to see it. It was one well, time, all day. Bob, well, I'm thinking it might be helpful to wait until our meeting on the 16th. Uh, to figure out what we're going to do, because I think the governor is possibly going to come down with tighter restrictions on outdoor gatherings uh, in the next couple days, according to his press conference yesterday. He said something about tightening 
up restrictions due to the fact that the state has been over 2,000 positives for, for two straight days now. And their, and their positivity rate went up to 7%. So I have a feeling where there's going to be some tighter restrictions coming down the, down the pike in the next week or two. So maybe we should wait to see what's happening, you know, oh, coming out of, out of Trenton. Well, that sounds fine. My intention was to um, give you options. Yes. I, I believe that these, event, these events engender good, good will in our community. And I would agree with that. So I will carry that to the 16th then. Yeah, because we have time for, you know, a December holiday, uh, you know, planning. So it'll, it'll impact both the menorah lighting and the Christmas tree lighting. Um, and that the chamber runs. So, okay. All right. All right. Anything um, else? Yes, I have a couple more. I'll sure. try to be brief. Um, in regard to the uh, uh, TEFRA hearing, uh, we have a resolution on, on the 8 o'clock agenda. I also have provided a copy of the notice and uh, a copy of the uh, post approval letter. Um, the, uh, I just wanted to ask, does anybody have any, any, any questions? Because I've done some research, I'm prepared to explain it. It's the same thing that was done last year right. uh, when uh, 2019 Mayor Madigan issued a, a host approval letter. It does not incur any in debt for the township of White Law. Thank you. Um, I hope you find the weekly reports that I uh, could provide to you timely and, and useful. Um, I would like to, in the future, have a discussion with the governing body regarding the reorganization meeting that's going to be around the corner, and uh, it's going to be a challenge to do it in the, you know, in the, in the, in the same manner. Right. I want to point that out. Uh, we started today with the employee and volunteer self-symptom uh, checklist that was required by the governor's executive order, and. Uh, I do want to point out that we received a letter that we've been awarded a Clean Community Grant, excuse me, a Clean Communities Award, uh, award and that'll be in your packet on uh, Friday. I think that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I will turn to reports of the Township Committee members. Uh, I'll start with you, Rudy. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, okay, um, DPW, quickly. Uh, leaf collection continues, I think they're in District 7 or 8 now, if I'm not mistaken, Bob. You are correct. 7. 7 it is? Okay, thank you, Nancy. Um, and the other thing is, the DPW completed the electric work and the installation of the spotlight on, the, well, let me back up a little bit. The flagpole um, that is being donated by the Partners in Pride was installed at the Larkin House about a week and a half ago. and. Um, the DPW today, uh, DPW personnel uh, completed the uh, electric work with a spotlight on the flagpole. So um, we're ready um, whenever the partners in Pride wish to, to, to raise the flag as it were. Okay. Uh, so that's done. So that's good. Um, planning board meeting next week is Monday due to the Veterans Day holiday on Wednesday. So we'll be having the planning board on Monday next week. Chairman Fortunato has a conflict. He will be at a Ramp Indian Hill school board meeting. So Vice Chair uh, Kevin Pervin will run the meeting. And I haven't seen the agenda. Have you, Tim? I, I, have not, I, I understand so. there's a few items. I, I'm not sure what's on the agenda, so I can't report on that. Um, sewers. Um, as Bob explained, uh, we had kind of an emergency sewer committee meeting yesterday uh, in town hall to deal with the, um, the uh, age and the working conditions of the... Um, Wayfair Circle Pumping Station and the Mountain Avenue Pumping Station. Uh, I guess Wayfair Circle is um, uh, in the most immediate need of, um, of repair. The systems are 30, 35 years old. Both of them are, and they're failing. And the, um, the equipment is obsolete. Uh, it's difficult, if not impossible, to get parts to, to repair it. So what the, um, what the uh, subcommittee is recommending to the township committee, as Bob indicated, is, uh, is replacement of both of them. Uh, this will avoid, um, if they fail, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where we have to pump it out every day and tra transport it by truck 
to a, a treatment plant, which gets very expensive very rapidly. Um, you see what the prices are on the Wayfair uh, estimate is 103,000. The Mountain Ave is 121. That's a larger station. Wayfair Circle only serves seven homes, and Mountain Ave is about 133 homes. Um, so we're recommending that we go ahead and do that. We have the money in our sewer cap fund to, um, to cover the expenses, along with other projects we have working. We're making progress on the Morley Ave a connection from Wild Duck Road to Morley Ave. We have an easement through two properties. The Paul Cor Ever Street uh, sewer extension, which is largely privately funded, and we just began. Um, um, Eli Battenjay um, finally has title to the barn restaurant on Sycamac Ave, and we're working with him to get a, a sewer extension about eight or 900 feet up to Hume, so he can the restaurant and the house and other homes along the way have the opportunity to hook into the sewer over there. Um, and we actually, our sewer cap fund can cover those expenses involved in those projects. So we recommend that. Um, where's my list? Um, I do want to thank the DPW workers for getting up 4.30 in the morning. Uh, Nancy and her staff in the clerk's office, Bob Shannon, and everyone involved for um, a, uh, a smoothly run and well run, um, if not unusual, election uh, day on Tuesday. Good job, everyone. Um, Wyckoff Education Commission, uh, Wyckoff Environmental Commission, uh, as we know, the governor signed the ban into, uh, on plastic and paper bags and styrofoam Yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure when it is. It goes into effect, I believe, the end of next year. Um, there's a styrofoam collection event in Glen Rock on Saturday, but I think it's for Glen Rock residents only, I believe. So if you're talking to anyone, uh, mention that. Um, I want to talk a minute about the subcommittee um, to look into the establishment of a water utility. I was talking to someone I know um, over the weekend whose well has failed, lives in a booster zone over in Sycamac, and not knowing the rules, called uh, the water utility and said, my well has failed, I'd like to hook up to, to the water utility. And he was told, couldn't do it, you're in the booster zone. Um, that's patently absurd that we have a public water utility in our town and there is water available and because the water utility is fixated on constructing an 85-foot water tower on Marywood at the end of Hickory Hill, which would quite honestly despoil the entire neighborhood over there, a, a lovely residential neighborhood, that we, can, uh, we cannot have residents hook up to public water in what they call the booster zone, which is virtually all of Sycamac plus um, across 208 on Russell Ave. So, so I think Ms. Rubenstein's um, uh, comments two meetings ago were well considered. And I think we should move along quickly with the establishment of the subcommittee and get going on this because it is, this is, I, the, the resident couldn't believe it. And every time this comes up, it points out how absurd it is to even do business with an outfit that will not hook our residents up. And, and they blame it on some pretty thin uh, uh, directive from the DEP, and it's just absurd. I just had to say that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, Melissa? Um, <clears throat> first, I want to thank Nancy and everyone who worked to make Election Day go really smoothly in Wyckoff. Um, so thank you for that, and all the poll workers, and just everybody who put in their effort from really early in the morning. Um, and to Rudy's point, um, I'd like to serve on the subcommittee for Wyckoff Water, so if we want to establish that. I thought point, we already established we it. We established it, but we didn't populate the subcommittee. I thought it was you and I. No, but we didn't Correct. do that at the meeting. Uh, I have a different recollection of it, but all right, c c c c uh, finish your report. Um, I think, well, let me just, I think we're all in the same mind that, that okay. the two of you it, it, well, if you want to, even make, if it wasn't formalized, yeah. if um, you want to make the motion that you and I sit on the subcommittee, we can do that as well. Okay, yeah. Just to formalize to make sure that's the case. 
I'll do that too. Okay. Um, at the end of the reports. And I think that's about it for now. Okay. All right, Tom. Uh, Rudy brings up a good point, and it uh, just refreshes my memory from being on the planning board um, just a little over a year ago, where, uh, again, the water utility, we had a four-house subdivision in the same area as the Sycamac area, which is being deprived from getting water from the water utility that was forced to uh, get our water from. It was a four-house subdivision with four, you know, almost $2 million homes that they couldn't get water either. So they had to put wells in. Again, this is 2020. That was 2018. They were forced to put wells in. And um, it's just, um, it's only it's one battle absurd. after another. Just Not to interrupt, I, I, what I didn't mention was it's going it's to cost us homeowner ten thousand dollars to sink a well. Right. So it's absurd. I'm sorry, Tom. Right. And I'm also refreshed of a homeowner that was on Five View that uh, had to put a septic in. I was told that he had to decommission his well, and then he decommissioned the well, put the septic in, went to Ridgewood Water to get the water from the street. Denied to get water, even though it was rigid water that uh, was the water utility. I told him he had to do it, and after a lot of gyrations and whatever, since he had just decommissioned as well, and they need, they asked for a certification that it was decommissioned. He gave him a de and they wanted him to do another well. So it's just uh, it's frustrating. Um, the uh, election. I just want to thank everybody for what they did. Again, the drop drop off mailbox, the drop off box was very effective not only for our Wyckoff residents but for many other public towners. It seemed to go uh, very well. Um, I just had one comment, and maybe we should think about it because there was a couple of instances on election day at the polling place with signage and candidates for elected office, and police got involved and. It's just frustrating that some people may not adhere, that maybe we should come up with something that's good for all political parties, that they would adhere to certain protocols and procedures and so on. But we should think about that for, uh, for next year. I think it could be benefit. It definitely would be beneficial to everybody. I mean, there was even people at the steps of Eisenhower School at uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. on Election Day with signage and talking to voters. So I don't think it's really what we want. The schools earlier, it said you can't be on school property. We know what the rules are as far as being distance away. And unfortunately, the candidate kept talking about the First Amendment and his right to do it. So we should think about it for next year and collegial cooperative spirit. <clears throat> uh, the other thing, too, is uh, for discussion amongst us all, um, outside dining. Uh, as we recall, uh, Tim and I are serving on the outside dining subcommittee. Uh, we put a resolution together uh, back in the May-June time period where we put a lot of flexibility for outside restaurants. Uh, because they were limited to, um, at that time they couldn't have anybody inside. They'd been limited 25% inside. We were very flexible. We worked with our code enforcement, fire, police, and um, that, that goes up to December 1st. Um, and again, I've spoken to many of the restauranteurs in town um, who were concerned about the weather, concerned about their ability to actually stay in business. A couple of them told me that they may not be staying in business. Uh, there seems to be mixed thoughts on any tenting, one because of the weather condition. The other consideration is as far as how would you heat it. Um, one person in town is, is getting an exterior heating system with uh, you know hot air blown in, which is permissible by fire law. 
cannot have any open flames inside. A couple other merchants have taken down uh, their tents because, uh, mainly because of the cost. It's, it's so expensive and how much use are they going to get. So I think the, uh, the discussion we should have a governing body since we go to December 1st, and again, we can have further discussions on the 16th. Um, the thought process from those that I spoke with, and I would be flexible as well, to, it would be to extend it um, through March 31st of 2021, because our normal outside dining takes effect on, a on April 1 or whatever the consensus are, in case they get some nice days in December, in case they get some nice days in January, at least they can be outside, they can put the gas heaters on, and um, i just try to get some feedback and some direction. My suggestion would be to extend it to the end of the public emergency that's been created by this pandemic. Okay, that might even be better. That's good, that's a good... Anyone else? Is, isn't there enabling legislation? This isn't just part of the governor's, uh, part of an executive order based on the emergency declaration. I thought there was enabling legislation. I don't I think, I think the governor's executive order. His executive order is what is the. Is that what yeah. right. gave it's, us the ability to it, suspend all of our. He declared it a public emergency and he extends it 30 days every like 29 days. He encouraged, he encouraged the dining to go outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone started relaxing his own right. transition. Right. So, okay. And, and you, I think you right. guys took executive action. Yeah, we took the executive you know, with action. With respect to your zoning ordinance. No, no, I understand that, but I thought we did that based on legislation, not on the governor's. No, it was based on uh, okay. the public emergency. So the it's also my understanding that he hasn't updated it. Currently, it says November 14th. I will, I will say, I mean, this probably goes to Tim's point and, and part of yours. I like that idea. The, our outdoor. I mean, if you can extend it to the outdoor dining ordinance, if that's what you, how you want to bridge the gap, but the outdoor dining ordinance doesn't cover a lot of the establishments where they have their out, where they have their right. seated right. out because most of them wouldn't be able to right. meet the parameters of the yeah. ordinance. So if you look at Boulder Road and Amici and some of those places, they're in violation of the parameters of our outdoor dining. They're doing what they're doing because of the resolution. Right. Because we've suspended all that. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And I'd say continue to suspend it until the end of this public if, emergency. If, okay, that, that, okay. If, if, if this is, if our ability to suspend our, um, our ordinances and, and everything um, is based on an executive order from the government, with, a governor which carries forward with his emergency declaration, that's different. I, I'm mistaken. I thought the legislature acted and the governor signed a bill that sunset at the end of this month. Now, yeah, if I'm wrong... Not, not that I'm aware. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. And, and, okay. No one has challenged what the towns have done. Right. I mean, we did pretty much what everybody right. else has done. So right. just on an emergent basis, you took pretty extreme measures and really circumvented the municipal land use law and had their own executive that's, order. That's to help, exactly. To, to help right. your, right. your, your commercial uh, you know, right. residents out. Yeah, to, and to, that's to, was my concern. If there was... If, if what enabled us to do that Sunsets at a certain date, we're at risk vis a vis the municipal land use law. Not, not that I know of. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay, all right, very good. Anything else, Tom? No, is, do we have like, is that a consensus that we can look at plan on doing the 16th? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yep, I think okay. so. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, but anything also, else? Also, we're going to have to watch. Um, the executive order in the coming weeks. Yes. Because it does sound like things are going to be tightened up. It sounds like he's going to. So that's what he said today. To he said the he's order working is. on tightening things up because of the. No, I mean, we've been over 1,000 for about 18 days and over 2,000 for two days now. I mean, that could affect your outdoor dining too. Right. If, they, if they did even outside gatherings, they've limited to 10 people. They, they may. I don't know what the, what the outdoor gatherings are going to be limited to, but we'll see. All right, you done, Tom? All right, Beth? Um, okay, so since our last meeting, I attended the Malprotection and Safe Treatment of Minors live webinar. Um, it was only it was a little less than two hours, so if you haven't done that, please sign up for that. Um, 
I was honored to be the co-host of the virtual screening of Bagot um, that was sponsored by the Environmental Commission and the Wyckoff Green Team. Thought it went really well. We had about 25 people. Everybody logged in for the virtual screening, so we watched the movie, and then a representative from ANJAC did a discussion and a Q&A. It was actually very timely because a week after the screening, um, Governor Murphy signed into legislation the um, single-use plastic and paper bag ban, so that was very exciting. And that is the final piece that we needed to finish up the Sustainable Journey Jersey Grant. So that um, will finish that up. Oh, I'm sure you're <laughs> glad to have that small grant um, wrapped up. And um, I just also wanted to thank Bob and Nancy and your staff in the DPW and the police department and all the poll workers for a smooth election day and for all the Wyckoff voters who cast their vote. It was very exciting. The turnout was, I don't know if it was record breaking, but for Wyckoff, it's yeah, it looks a lot like, it more looks like than it was. voted yeah. than in any mm -hmm. other election I've ever seen. So I think statewide it might be record breaking. Yeah, yeah. Sure. so that was exciting to see democracy at work. So that's it for me. Okay, thank you. I think I've made all my comments, so I'm going to turn to uh, the report of the township attorney. Sure. Uh, the mayor just signed two, two, lease, two new leases for existing tenants on our, on our cell towers tonight. We got a 25-year extension out of Verizon and a 25-year extension at T-Mobile. Um, took a while. I think a lot because of COVID going back and forth the lease, but I wanted to just thank Bob for the work he did because it's really a product of the bid that he put out. And, um, he's also, you know, he's got some language in there that gets additional fees and technology is upgraded and new tenants go on. And uh, I think the way the lease is sitting now, it's probably about $80,000 a year. It'll move up to about $100,000 a year as the increases go each year for the taxpayers. That's over the next 25 years. So, uh, good job. Bob did a good job on that. You guys you did a good job on that. Um, I had a meeting over on Paul Court for that, I'd say, a pretty extensive sewer extension, neighborhood sewer extension, which is going to hit Ebers and Paul Court and a couple other uh, streets, and it'll, it'll probably bring sewer to maybe, I'm guessing about 40 houses. I don't have the exact count. Wow. But it was pretty promising. Uh, you know, Mark DeGeneres was there. He did a really nice job of explaining things to the residents and, and answering questions. And the uh, well, the one resident who's really kind of leading the project and taking on the majority of the cost, Mr. Kukin, he had his engineer there, T. Borland Tesis, and he answered a lot of questions. And it appears. Uh, that there is enough interest to make this project go ahead. So the next steps will be the residents will have to sign the agreements and you know, a, certain, a certain amount of money will have to be put. I'm going to hold it in my trust account and it'll, it'll get brought over to the town as part of the project, contribution to the project that way. But it seems like we'll be starting to sign some, some people up and Mark's done a great job with that. And I have one... Uh, one issue to talk about uh, at closed session, which is a uh, threat of litigation with regards to the local request. Okay, yeah. we'll wait for closed session yeah. then. Uh, anybody else have anything? I'll just make a motion. Yeah, go ahead, do the motion now. Uh, uh, two things. I, I would like to, talking about sewers, um, um, I'd like to acknowledge the contribution that Mark DeGenero continues to make regarding these sewer projects and the pumping station issues. And he's very knowledgeable, and um, he actually saves us quite a bit of money doing work in-house that we would have to contract out engineering type work. So, so uh, thank you for reminding me to say that because he's an invaluable uh, part of our uh, our um, improving sewer um, uh, picture here in Wyckoff. Uh, having said that, um, I'd like to make a motion to have the subcommittee to look into a water utility as Melissa Rubenstein and uh, um, Mayor Tim Shanley. Second. Mr. Bernstein? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. All right, anything else we need to do before I ask for a motion to recess? Oh, no, no we have to recess. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, you're going right. into you're open right. session. No, you're right, you're right. All right, can I get a motion to recess the open session meeting to conduct the 8 p.m. business meeting? So moved. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. 
Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Okay, we are in recess for about 20 minutes before we start the 8 p.m. business meeting. We are still live on camera. Okay. Yes. And, and mics are, are open. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could hibernate. For them. I want to hibernate for them. Too. <laughs> Why can't I do that? I want to wake up and the whole pandemic will be over. Yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna get any better. No, and even if we get this vac vaccine, you know how hard it's gonna be to get it to everybody. Most of these vaccines need, 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 need to be stored at minus 50 to minus 80 degrees. There's no facilities that can do hold a lot of that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Pfizer one has to be minus so 80. Put the stock in a company that well, yeah, years. if you have money to put, start buying like refrigerating companies that can refrigerate something at yeah. some ridiculously <laughs> low temperature. Isn't it amazing? That's like I spoke to somebody. Every night, all the news, all you heard about the pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. Oh, no. Now it's like, now the election is blown up now. Right, it's yeah. It's like, no one cares about the pandemic anymore. Uh. You never hear the numbers. All you want to do is talk about votes and vote counting. Frisco Foods has a huge new refrigerator warehouse in Wayne. Do they? They might be storing. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of food these days. Well, yeah, but I don't think they ever manufacture a freezer to go to minus 80 degrees. Yeah, minus 80 is cold. That's cold. How's the puppy? She's doing very well. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. 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 She sleeps with Brian every night. Oh, bless. bless you. Oh, bless. Is the cam the camera's live? Yes. Yeah. Your sneeze very quiet. My kids were testing. Symptom. You have to go get tested to get back to school. Like literally running out. Is anybody working the school? I mean, are the middle school? Is Eisenhower in or they have? No, they're not in until the 11th. Washington is out for two weeks. Yeah, my all my kids are home right now. Just 
Fred Porventure. Okay. Cornerstone. He'll be calling in. Church, yeah. Is he, he calling, calling you? Mike. He's calling All right, Mike. perfect. I forgot. I was going to have him call this and I forgot about that. So. Okay. Sorry, I missed your call. I put my phone on vibrate. Oh, it's all right. I mean, Beth came and let me in the door. I forgot my key. He was locked out. I didn't have that key back on my car key and ring. So flag football for the first graders is going to be over. I know, the they're on the track field this weekend. Uh, 1.30, yeah. 1.30? Yeah. That's yeah. right. He's just psyched about it. He's like, I get to play on the turf. I'm like, yeah. I can see Brian transitioning from soccer to football now. He actually scored the two point conversion. That's awesome. Uh, you know, in the, you know, caught the ball in the end zone. Pretty good catch, too. Yeah, and then he had another, like, 15 to 18 yard run, catch and run. I'm like, wow, he's actually now looks like a football player. He's figured out how to do it. Matthew likes it, too? Matthew likes it, too. Yeah. He's, he's a different, he's, he's a lineman, defensive or offense on the line. He's never going to be touching and running the ball. Mm -hmm. So TJ already he, wants a player. He, he, wants a third grade. Grade. he said he thinks oh, he, he can do whatever his brothers do. Any C12. Yeah. It's going to be a nice weekend. It's going to be in the 70s. What? It's going to be in the 70s this weekend. It's going to be nice this weekend. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to try to go, go out to dinner somewhere outdoors. I was thinking that too. It's going to be one of the last nights we took the event. Know. It'd be great if it lasts all the way through Thanksgiving, but that's a tall order. Are you guys doing anything? And I should I also read 302. Right. I'm hoping yes, I can convince Melissa to cook a turkey. I don't know if she's going to want it. She's like, the kids don't like it. It's just going to be you and I. I'm like, yeah, but it's Thanksgiving. It's like Thanksgiving, though. I get a small one or something. It's a tradition. You get it from like the market basket. Like, just I get know. it prepared so you yeah. don't have to get, like, do like, a huge turkey. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Just get a turkey breast. Yeah, but it's not the same. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. But, you know, we're not going to go to my mother-in-law and father-in-law because they're doctors. They don't, they, they, they don't, they don't, they're around people all the time. They don't want other people around them. And then yeah. next thing you know, somehow, you know, somehow they're spreading it to us or we're spreading it to them and then exactly. they're spreading it to their patients. It's the first year in my history that I'm not, except when Lukey was born and he was in the NICU. Mm -hmm. It's the only year that oh, I'm yeah. not going to visit my family. No, I know. I mean, we, we had a couple times when the, bo the boys were young, they were NICU and PICU, mm -hmm. that we didn't do a lot. But it, it didn't last the, the way it's lasting now, from March all the way through probably Christmas. Yeah. And into next year. I know. Yeah, our reorg meeting, meeting is going to be very small, unfortunately. 
was trying to think of other venues. We were thinking of the turf field. Yeah, turf field? But it would be pretty cold. It would be a little cold. Mm -hmm. January is usually cold. Yeah. In the bay? Maybe. Or the high school? I don't know. High school will not allow us. The high schools will let us. No, the schools are, are keeping everyone out of there. That there that doesn't need to be in there. It's kind of why basketball, you know, it's travel basketball is not happening. They're they're allowing it for limited, so we could use it for the rec. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Maybe they would. Talk about but then, then we got to figure out what the governor's restrictions are. I mean, yeah, like I mean, any they, type of could indoor, very restricted by January. They're going to because we're, we're. I mean, if you look at the graphs when we were up up here, and then we went down like this, well, we're going like this. We're turning it into a, a freaking valley, you know, that we were in. And, we're and now the we're, same numbers we were at. In yeah, we're at we're at May numbers, beginning of May. I was hoping we'd get under a thousand. We haven't been under a thousand for like almost three weeks now. And the positivity rate went up to seven point something. It was eight percent yesterday. Yeah. Which, which essentially is mostly the, the most the most people are getting tested are positive. So well not really, it's eight percent. Seven seven point something. Hospitals are starting to fill up again. Too. Mm -hmm. The good thing is the doctors have kind of figured out how to treat these people, and the deaths aren't as high as they used to be. No, not nearly as high. No. Nancy, I love how you have the ordinances and everything all together in one. Instead of Joyce used to have separate ones, you had to pick them up, but they're all everything's there on the agenda. It it's much it, it, well, it helps me a lot easier. It helps me to understand it, so. Yeah, no, and it helps keep me f get in, it, it flowing. So thank you. We worked as a team, a project team. Mm -hmm. Everything's a project. So it gets done. I haven't changed my gavel because I'm a lefty. I write righty, but I do most of the other things lefty, so I put it so I'm, the, I'm using it lefty wise. I expect it to be loud, though. Yeah. See, and I'm still able to write and do everything I need to do here. And I can use the gavel and write at the same time. His bathing suit. He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm going in the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> okay. You're not going surfing. <laughs> fishing. I wish I was fishing. There you go. Come on, Jody. We're going fishing. <laughs> go out on a black whale. Is that black whale still there in Long Beach Island? That's the way to do a moderation. I mean, sure. Yeah, I think it is. It's down it might be the black whale. Some of them are dark shot, but I don't know which ones. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's
I know, I'm having that like, let me hold it really yeah. away <laughs> so I can maybe yeah. <laughs> read what it says. Uh, so have you been going into the office at all? Are you doing everything wrong? No, I've been I've been going in the into the office for the last three months. You have been? Yeah. Good. I was there today. It's good to get you out of the house. All right. Once I get to the office, I try to stay there now because Essex County, it's I think they had three hundred positives the last couple days. So Essex County is now Essex County today overtook Bergen for the most positives since this thing started. Oh wow! Essex. Yeah. They buy I like, they just said they had three hundred last couple of days. That's yeah, they did. Lot. Yeah, but they've already gotten over twenty five thousand, like Bergen County. They they're up on us now by about two two hundred two fifty. What's what's the numbers? Like, what's the executive order right now for the restaurants? They have fifty percent capacity. Twenty five. Twenty five. Were they at, were they ever at fifty? They were never at fifty. Mm -hmm. So I guess some of these restaurants just aren't obeying the. Uh... According to when we went out to pick up our dog out and out right outside of Allentown, we stopped at a restaurant. I was talking to the the person that ran the restaurant. I said, "What's your capacity allowed in Pennsylvania?" He goes, "Fifty percent." I said, "Oh man, we're only allowed twenty five percent in uh, New Jersey." He goes, yeah, we wouldn't survive. Mm. They were. I was out in Pittsburgh before we even started opening our doors inside. They, they were already inside. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I, I think our governor is a little more aggressive. I don't, and I don't think that's a bad thing. But I think he's just a little. He's been. Well, we were we were hit before everybody else, right? New York. We were. Got the worst. Mm -hmm. New York stuff. got it the yeah. first. We were right next to New York, so it trickled into us right away. And unfortunately, we were the ones who figured out how to treat it. You know, our doctors were, you know, and New York doctors, how to figure out how to treat it. Yeah. And they learned a lot, but unfortunately, a lot of people died while they figured it out. Because nobody knew what it was. Is the, is the death rate still down? The death rate has really gone down. I mean, we're getting like maybe 10 to 20 deaths confirmed a day back in March and April. It was like 50, you know, it was a lot higher. The, the, the new case, the spike in new cases, what's the numbers of white cough look like? you still getting those? We, uh, we got, uh, I think, seven the other day. Seven? Seven and like 11 one day. Yeah, I, I update it every time. We only get them on Tuesday and Friday. Let me ask you this. Are the new ones coming to wake up? Are they mostly kids because the students are getting tested? Or? No, they, they, don't, they don't tell us who they are, age, yeah. is anything. They just... You know, and, and the governor basically has said <coughs> it's community spread mostly by the contact tracers are telling the State Department of Health. Most of it's happening on indoor gatherings at par private houses, like parties at somebody's house. Which one person will then infect ten people. Yeah. <coughs> We have two minutes before we kick it off. So, speaking of that, the church, you have to sign in now. So I thought it was in case something happened. They got your name and number. Yeah. They said, no, they keep it for their records. In case they get questioned how many people were in church, they can prove that they didn't have more than whatever. Oh, really? Or, or if a con er, er, or and you can also use the for, contact, for contact for contact trace. So they keep it too easy. I thought it was just contact. Yeah, that makes sense. He's at the church of my uncle's now. He's at Our Lady of Mercy in Port yeah. Bridge. Yeah. yeah. My God, my, he, my uncle, who's also my godfather, he's like, yeah, I, I ran into, our new priest is your old priest. I'm like, oh, he's a great guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Alright, we got 8 o'clock. So, fuck, okay. just tell me when it's fired up. Like we all fired up? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let's call the regular meeting of the Wyckoff Township Committee to order. Can we do a flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Okay, we're just waiting for uh, the invocation. You want me to do my, want me to read this until I call? Yeah, why don't you read that until I told he calls. Because I so. All right, yeah. All right, we're going to do the uh, reading of the Open University Public Order. Meetings <laughs> Act until uh, 8.05. Okay. Please take notice that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10, colon 4 through 6, at SAC, and in consideration of Executive Order Number 103 issued by Governor Murphy on March 9, 2020, declaring a state of emergency in the state of New Jersey, the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff does hereby notify the public that to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, the meeting of the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff scheduled for 8 p.m. Thursday, November 5, 2020 at Wyckoff Town Hall, 340 Franklin Avenue, Wyckoff, New Jersey, 07481, will be conducted via the Township of Wyckoff's YouTube channel. And members of the public may call 201-891-7000, extension 222, should they wish to provide public comment during the 8 p.m. public comment period. Members of the public may also email their public comments to wyckoffclerk at wyckoff-nj.com before 3 p.m. on the date of the meeting. These comments will be read at the meeting during the public comment period. These measures are implemented to allow members of the public to observe the meeting via live streaming and to provide to the public the ability to comment before the meeting through written comments and during the period for public comments during the meeting. Due to the COVID-19 public health emergency, members of the public will not have access to Town Hall. This notice and agenda have been posted on the front door of Town Hall, facing Franklin Avenue, and on the Township's homepage, wyckoff-nj.com, at the quick link for minutes and agendas on Friday, October 30, 2020. Please select Township Committee and locate the date of the meeting to view documents, such as resolutions and ordinances, which would otherwise be made available. General instructions regarding access to the meeting will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-nj.com as a news item on Friday, October 30th, 2020, at 4.30 p.m. To view the live stream Township Committee meeting, please access the YouTube link, which will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-nj.com as a news item immediately prior to the commencement of the meeting at approximately 6.55 p.m. on November 5th, 2020. To be notified of all future live stream township meetings, please create a YouTube account and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Township of Wyckoff. In the event of the YouTube platform modifies its connectivity protocols and does not announce these critical changes again in the future, instructions on how to view each meeting via Zoom technology will be posted at the news section of the township's homepage, wyckoff-nj.com, before 7.10 p.m. This second method of conducting remote meetings is provided to ensure the continuity of government when platforms which the township does not control establish unannounced changes and will only be utilized if it is not possible to conduct the meeting via live stream on YouTube. As a precaution for this plan B, the following instructions are provided. Please locate the link on the news item announcing the township committee meeting on the homepage of our website and use the posted link for the November 5, 2020 work session and business meeting set to begin at 7 p.m. This regular business meeting of the Wyckoff Township Committee is now in session. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting appears on our annual schedule of meetings. A copy of said annual schedule has been posted on the bulletin board in Memorial Town Hall. A copy has been filed with the municipal clerk, as well as the record, the Ridgewood News, and the North Jersey Herald and News. All newspapers having a general circulation throughout the Township of Wyckoff. At least 48 hours prior to this meeting, the agenda thereof was similarly posted filed and emailed to said newspapers. <clears throat> the agenda with the resolutions and ordinances to be considered was posted on the township's website at minutes and agendas on the Friday prior to tonight's meeting. Perfect. You got it in right before uh, he's going to probably call. So just do a quick roll call of the township committee. Okay. Please. Mr. Boonstra? Here. Ms. Fisher? Here. Ms. Rubenstein? Here. Mr. Madigan? Here. Mayor Shanley? Here. And then he should be calling any second now. Mm -hmm.
Hello, Pastor Provencher? Yes. This is Nancy calling from the Township of Wyckoff. How are you? Oh, hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Are you ready to do our invocation? I am. I am. Thank you for reaching out to me. Um, if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, we're ready we for ready. you. Thank you. Okay. Our Father and our God, I thank you for these men and women, for the time that they give uh, to lead our town. And I pray that you would give them great wisdom and great insight. And we pause to pray for our nation at this time of great uncertainty and uh, great division um, and great transition. We pray for a completely legal and fair election process. We pray for peace in our streets. And we pray for um, for just your guidance as we move into this next phase. So I thank you, Father, for those who are working tonight to run our town and who are doing the hard work of leading in a time of crisis. Uh, please bless them and guide them, and we pray that you would also heal and bless our nation. We pray this in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Have, a, have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Uh, Okay, I'm going to request for a motion to open a public comment period. Public comment period, <coughs> five minutes per speaker for public comment on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the Township of Whitehall. So moved. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Okay, the public comment period is open now. If you have public comment, please call 201-891-7000, extension 222. If there's any public comment, call 201-891-7000, extension 222. Hearing no one call, um, I will uh, make a motion to close public uh, comment period. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. All right, can I get a motion for approval of the October 22nd, 2020 Township Committee work session and regular business meeting minutes? I'll move. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Okay, Nancy, we're up to the consent yes. agenda. Can you please read the consent agenda? All matters listed below are considered by the Township Committee to be routine in nature. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If any discussion is desired by the Township Committee, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. First, we have resolutions. Number 20-293, review of best practices checklist. Number 20-294, transfer of funds per NJSA 40A colon 4 through 58. Number 20-295, extend recreational camp program, CHESS. Number 20-296, extend recreational multi-sport camp program. 
Number 20-297, Extend Recreational Camp Program Crafty and Creative Children. Number 20-298, Authorize Purchase from Cooperative Pricing System Contract of a Pickup Truck. Number 20-299, Readopt Tort Claims Form. Number 20-300, Payment of Bills. Number 20-301, Authorization for Public Hearing and Compliance Letter. Number 20-302, Authorize Emergency Procedures and Contracts. Number 20-C12, Closed Session for Pending Litigation. Number two, ordinance for introduction. We have none for tonight. Number three, motions. Uh, number one, appoint Maureen Mitchell to the vacant position on the Historic Preservation Commission. B, approve specifications and authorize advertised co competitive sealed bidding for recreation equipment. C, promotion of Sergeant Kevin Kasak to the rank of Lieutenant. D, approve the size and form of plaque recognizing Lakeland Bank's donation of a scoreboard, including its installation at the new synthetic turf field at Memorial Field on the Memorial Field campus. Recognition plaque shall be attached to the scoreboard's stanchion. May I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor? So yes. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, may I please add something? Under motions number three, can we um, uh, add to the end of that uh, motion effective 11-16-2020? Yes, very, very, very good to add that. Uh, anyone have any objection to that? Okay, yes, please add that to the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the consent agenda. Second. Thank you, Mr. Madigan. Ms. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I have three ordinances for public hearing further consideration. The first is Ordinance 1922, which is an ordinance to provide a certain capital improvement in the Township of Wyckoff and to provide for the receipt, acceptance, and deposit of Bergen County funds, therefore, and to authorize appropriations of $51,298.50 for second reading by title only, and a copy of this ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall where public notices are customarily posted, and copies have been made available to members of the general public of the township who have requested the same. I move the ordinance on second reading by title only. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. This is the time and place for public hearing on Ordinance 1922. And all persons who wish to be heard, please state your name and address before making your statement. If you wish to comment, please call 201-891-7000, extension 222. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to place on the record that the Township of Wyckoff has received a letter from the County of Bergen indicating that they will provide us with a grant of $51,298.50 to reimburse the township for these improvements. I move that the public hearing on ordinance number 1922 be closed. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff that Ordinance Number 1922, after public hearing and further consideration, is hereby adopted, and the Municipal Clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish the notice of final passage of said ordinance in the official newspaper for the Township as provided by law. I move the resolution. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. We also have ordinance number 1923 for public hearing and further consideration, which is an ordinance authorizing the Township of Wyckoff to extend the lease of real property together with improvements thereon to the Wyckoff Torpedo Soccer Club, Inc. for public purposes for a term of 10 years with a 10-year option pursuant to the Local Lands and Buildings Law, NJSA 40A, dash 12.1 at SEC for second reading by title only and a copy of this ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in town hall 
where public notices are customarily posted and copies have been made available to members of the general public of the township who have requested the same. I move the ordinance on second reading by title only. Second. Thank you. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. This is the time and place for the public hearing on Ordinance 1923. And all persons who wish to be heard, please state your name and address before making your statement. If you wish to comment, please dial 201 891 7000, extension 222. I move that the public hearing on ordinance number 1923 be closed. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff that ordinance number 1923, after public hearing and further consideration, is hereby adopted. And the municipal clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish the notice of final passage of said ordinance in the official newspaper for the township as provided by law. I move the resolution. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. And finally, we have ordinance number 1924 for public hearing further consideration. An ordinance authorizing the township of Wyckoff to execute an agreement to allow the use of real property together with improvements thereon to the Wyckoff Torpedo Soccer Club, Inc. for public purposes for a term of 10 years pursuant to the Local Lands and Buildings Law, NJSA 40A-12.1 at SEC. For second reading by title only, and a copy of this ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall where public notices are customarily posted and copies have been made available to persons of the general public of the township who have requested the same. I move the ordinance on second reading by title only. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. This is the time and place for the public hearing on Ordinance 1924. And all persons who wish to be heard, please state your name and address before making your statement. If you wish to comment, please dial 201. 891-7000, extension 222. I move that the public hearing on ordinance number 1924 be closed. Second. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. <coughs> Be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff <coughs> that Ordinance Number 1924, after public hearing and further consideration, is hereby adopted, and the Municipal Clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish the Notice of Final Passage of said ordinance in the official newspaper of the Township as provided by law. I move the resolution. Second. <coughs> Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. All right, before I ask for a mo motion to adjourn and go back into work session, does anyone else have anything to do uh, in the works in the business meeting? If not, I'll ask for that uh, motion to adjourn and go back into the work session. So moved. Second. <coughs> Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Okay, we are back in the work session. I will now need a motion to go into closed session for uh, discuss something uh, regarding possible litigation. I'll make a motion. Second.
We will be ending the. Yes. Okay. R Rudy made the motion. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa seconded it. it, so we just need a vote. Um, on. Mr. Boonstra? Yes. Ms. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mayor Shanley? Yes. Okay, we're going to be going in a closed session, and the video feed's going to be going.